God, we come to you today and we ask you, Father, that you would think through Joshua's mind and let his words be a weapon against the enemy that we can use. Amen. Thank you, John. Um, today, I'm going to be preaching about uh, He is in Control. That's the title of my message. Uh, in Nehemiah, if you'll grab your Bibles with me, uh, verse 9, or uh, excuse me, chapter 9, verse 6 to 12. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. You are the Lord God who chose Abram. Er, Abram, and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and named him Abraham. You found his heart faithful to you, and you made a covenant with him to give his descendants the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, and Girgashites. You have kept your promise because you are righteous. You saw the suffering of our ancestors in Egypt. You heard their cry at the Red Sea. You sent signs and wonders against Pharaoh, against all his officials and all the people of his land, for you knew how arrogantly the, the Egyptians treated them. You made a name for yourself, which remains to this day. You divided the sea before him, before them so that they passed through it on dry land, but you hurled their pursuers in the, into the depths like a stone into mighty waters. By day, you led them with a pillar of cloud, and by night, with a pillar of fire to give them light on the way they were to take. God's timing is perfect. The same God who formed the heavens has formed your life perfectly. Where you are going to college has already been planned. Whether you're going to go to college at all has been planned. Who you're going to date or marry is, is, is already being sent to you. He knows if you're even supposed to be married, if that's something he wants for your life. His timing is perfect, even when it seems like everything is coming down in your head, when you're depressed, lonely, suicidal, and you say there is, there is no way out of the season. God is right around the corner with the knockout blow to the enemy. He's coming like that. Abraham, he was dead in his flesh. He was 90 years old when he had... Um, he, he was around, he, he was in his 90s when he had Isaac, and Sarah was around 90 years old. The oldest woman to have a child was 59 years old. So however old he, however old that, one, that woman was, Sarah was a lot older. And so it was physically impossible for her to have children. You know why God waited, to, waited that long to, to birth Isaac? Because he wanted to make sure that Abraham knew that it was God who was doing it and not Abraham. God gave Abraham the ability to perform and to father a child when he was 99. Listen, God knows exactly what you need. He is waiting until every human resource in your life is destroyed and is unable to be used. His timing is perfect. And he tells the enemy, this much and no further. If your mother is sick with cancer that was sent from the devil, God says, this much and no further. That loved one who doesn't know the Lord is on life support in the hospital with COVID-19. God says, this much and no further. It may seem like the devil has you in a chokehold and your life is slipping away, but just know that God is saying, this much and no further. That loved one who doesn't know the Lord... Um, that loved one who doesn't know the Lord, they're dying, right? But God's saying this much and no further. The nation that was nearly crippled by COVID-19 and a fraudulent election, God is saying this much devil and no further. God is in control. 
with one glance, the enemy is sent running with his tail between his legs because God is in control. God is not up in heaven, wringing his hands, biting his nails. He is laughing at the plans of the enemy. He knows his power. He knows the end from the beginning, and he laughs because the enemy is already under his feet. Once we realize this, we can understand why Paul called our present troubles light and momentary. William might say, it doesn't seem very light to me. My grandma, she's dying. It doesn't seem very light to me. God knows that. And that is why he has promised us that in the day of trouble, he would deliver us. He, in, in Hebrews 4.15, he says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Jesus was tempted to give up and abandon humanity to its fate, but he knew God had a purpose in the pain. In Daniel 3, 17 through 18, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are before King Nebuchadnezzar, who had absolute power in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar is three seconds away from throwing them in the fiery pit. You know what they had to say? If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Even if God doesn't deliver you in your pain, you still need to know that he is in control and you are not in control. Listen, the Bible says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him, yet will I worship him, yet will I serve him, because he is God and I am not. Because, listen, if, if we were in control, the world would be in shambles. You know why? Because we don't have infinite power. We don't have infinite knowledge. God has infinite knowledge, and he knows that through the pain and through the, through the trial, there's purpose coming through that. All right. And so I think it was um, it was a it was a very famous person in Romania named Richard Vermbrand, who said that he was he was once watching his wife uh, do some crow or uh, he, he, he was he was watching his wife embroider some fabric. And he and he, and he looked at the and, and he and he looked at the bottom of it and it was just all a jumble of of uh, of um of thread and like there was red thread and then there was like white thread thread going through and it was just a mess on on the bottom that's our view we're seeing the mess of COVID-19 we're seeing the mess that was 2020 and we're saying God where where is the beauty in this and then we get to heaven and God turns the embroidery embroidered uh, fabric over and we see, oh my gosh, this had a perfect plan. And we follow the threads. We're like, God, this is where you use this in, all, in my life. God, this is where you use that in my life. And we say, God, thank you so much for being in control. I could never have planned this. I could never have, have, have connected the dots on this, but you knew exactly what I needed in that moment. And you knew right, right where I was and you knew where I needed to be for, for that season. Listen, God knows your trouble. All right. Like that, like that verse says, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. He knows your frame. The Bible says he, he remembers that we are dust. And you know what he says? He says that, um, I think, uh, I, I heard it said once that God will never give you more than you can handle. He will always have that, have that pathway, that way of deliverance where he will come through and he'll pull you up. Listen, you know why the nation is going, is, is going, uh, is going under right now? Because people haven't turned to God and because people haven't said, Lord, we can't do this only you can. God's, God's waiting for us to say, Lord, I, 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 I surrender control. I give up. I can't, I can't do this anymore because that's, that's when he comes in and that's, that's, that's when he delivers the, um, the right cross to the devil. All right. And so the devil knows this. All right. He, he, he knows this. He knows that his time is up. He knows that his time is running out, and that's why he's he's raging. He it says, "Why do the heathen rage? Because they know that their time is short. Because they know that their that that their plans will come to it will not come to fruition if God is on the throne, and they know He's on the throne. 
that's why they're raging and that's why they're trying to destroy this country and that's and that's why they're trying to do as much as they can to destroy um destroy this country before before the rapture comes because they know that um that this that uh that um that this nation is planned and purposed by God to stand and to be a and to be a witness towards what what towards what God is going to do the puritans they call it they call the colonies and their and their um and their little group of uh like settlements they call that the city on a hill we're called to be a city on a hill listen we're not supposed to be you know foundering in economic troubles or we're not supposed to be foundering in um in like uh in uh in war we're supposed to be saying no that's not biblical that's not that's not um that's not uh that's not godly and we're supposed to be sending missionaries out to the world Listen, God, he, he knows that this nation is, is set up to be, to, um, to, to be the, uh, to be the light. And he wants us to, um, to grasp that in our minds. All right. So listen, God saw the suffering of our, of, of, of this, this is the, um, this is the this is the Israelites speaking in Nehemiah. You saw the suffering of our ancestors in Egypt. You heard their cry at the Red Sea. You sent signs and wonders against Pharaoh, against all his officials and all the people of his land. For you knew how arrogantly the Egyptians treated them. You made a name for yourself, which remains to this day. God is going to send a deliverer to us. God, he's he, he's not just going to leave us to to um, to drown. He's just he's he's gonna he's gonna grab us and he's gonna pull us up as a nation. All right. Don't look around at the news and don't look at what other people are saying. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. You know why? You know why Peter sank was because he fell because he uh, because he got his eyes off of Jesus, off off of what the Lord is saying and off of what uh, what uh, what what the what the what the narrative of God was saying, and he said. I'm, I'm going to turn my gaze from left to right, and I'm going to see these huge waves coming, and I'm going to, and and I, and I, and then he's, and then he started to fear in in his heart. He was like, I can't, God, this is too much. You can't, I I can't, I can't, I can't do this. And so he started sinking. But that's that's all that God, that's that's all that Jesus needed was for him to start sinking, and then he grabbed him and he pulled him up. So. How how is it that we can say that he's that God isn't in control? Listen, Peter only sank a little bit, okay, before Jesus grabbed him and pulled him up. All right. Even 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 when you're sinking into depression, even when you're sinking into into suicidal thoughts, even when you're sinking into anxiety over what's happening in the world, God is gonna God is still gonna pull you up and he, and he's gonna say, look at you, you're you're a miracle. All right. So I, I'm I'm just that was kind of a shorter devo, but I'm I'm just gonna pray right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, that you are that you that you are in control, Lord Jesus. I thank you that through everything that we're going through right now, God, that you are the that you are still on the throne, God, that you are still in control, Lord Jesus. And I just pray over these unshaken vessels, Lord Jesus, that you have set up at, for such a time as this, Lord Jesus, that they would be that that you that you would um that you would show them how how much uh how how much you are in control, Lord Jesus, that you would show them that you are on the throne in their lives and in and in um and in this and in this nation lord jesus that they would not despair in this in this day of trouble lord jesus that they would be that they would be strong in their faith that you would make them unshaken unshakable lord jesus and i just pray that um that um whatever's going on in the nation lord i just rebuke the spirit of division in the name of jesus and i just pray that um that uh that sunday would be an amazing service lord i pray that your fire would fall that you would pour out your spirit on us to, on on sunday in the name of jesus amen hey guys hope you enjoyed that video be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you want to stay tuned in for more be sure to hit that notification bell and also follow us on instagram on shaken underscore vessels that's all we have for today thank you Thank you.